flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Court, please conduct a roll call. Heidi? Here. Plinker? Here. Nargi? Here. Reynolds? Here. Campbell? Here. Brown? Here. Williamson? Here. Downing? Here. Allersmeyer? Here. Quorum President. <laughs> Our first order of business this evening is a public hearing for Resolution 2015-21. A resolution approving a waiver of noncompliance and deduction for tax abatement in an economic revitalization area, Nanchon American Advanced Aluminum Technologies. We'll entertain a motion to temporarily recess. Mr. Campbell? Move to recess for consideration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Brown? A second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we are temporarily recessed in order for public comment to be heard on Resolution 2015-21. Okay, Mr. Bur or Mr. Downing, um, do you? Can I accept a motion from you to reconvene? Please. Thank you, <laughs> Mrs. Williamson. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you. We are back in regular session. Uh, first up, the approval of the Common Council minutes from October. What's the pleasure of the council, Mr. Campbell? Can we make that in one motion for the both of them? I Yes. Can we? No. Okay. So we will do the uh, council meeting minutes for October the 5th and October the 21st be approved as communicated. Thank you. Mrs. Williamson. Second. Moved and seconded to approve those minutes for both the Common Council October and Special Budget Meeting uh, October 21st um, as communicated. Any comments, changes? Okay. All those in favor of the approval of those minutes signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, presentation and disposal of claims? There are none. Presentation of petitions and communications? There are none. Reports of city offices on file in the city clerk's office. Fleet month, month maintenance monthly September. Police department monthly September. Water pollution control department monthly September. Water works department monthly September. Thank you. And those reports are on file and available to view for the public during regular hours. Um, just a reminder, you can't do that tomorrow because no one will be here. Right. <laughs> so, regular business hours that are not a holiday. Uh, we have no ordinances for second reading this evening, so we move on to ordinances for first reading. First up is Ordinance 2015-32. An ordinance setting the amount of security bonds for persons covered under Indiana Code 5-4-1-18A7 and authorizing the purchase of blanket bonds, scheduled bonds, and or crime insurance policies. Thank you. Mr. Klinker. I move we hear Ordinance 2015-32 on first reading. Thank you. Mr. Heidi. Second. Moved and seconded to hear Ordinance 2015-32. Mr. Jones. Good evening, Mike Jones, controller. Um, the ordinance before you uh, is the result of uh, a passage of HEA 393 in May, where the legislators uh, had changed uh, some of the definitions for surety bond coverage and uh, what cons what you could use uh, to cover folks, either either the surety bond, blanket bond, a schedule bond, and or a crime policy. Uh, they also changed the uh, the uh, term from instead of just 365 days to a calendar year, so it would take effect January 1 and, uh, through December. And uh, the State Board of Accounts sent out some guidance uh, to this uh, particular law and said that uh, they would not take an audit exception if we passed an ordinance uh, allowing this, and so that's why that's before you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Comments or questions from Council? Okay. Thank you. Comments or questions from members of the audience regarding Ordinance 2015-32? Seeing none, would the clerk please conduct a roll call vote? Heidi? Aye. Slinker? Aye. Nargi? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Brown? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downing? Aye. Ordinance passes 8-0. Thank you. 
The next ordinance for first reading this evening is Ordinance 2015-33. An ordinance amending Chapter 31, Section 31.016 of the Tippecanoe County Code, Chapter 2.04, Section 2.04.010 of the Lafayette City Code, Chapter 24, Section 24.22 of the West Lafayette City Code, Chapter 32 of Section 32.035 of the Town of Dayton Code, and an ordinance number 329 of the Town of Battleground, and an ordinance of 95.4 of the Town of Clark Hill. Nice. just take a break or something. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Reynolds. I move for recess. I move, yeah. I move to hear and approve Ordinance 2015-32. Thank you. Mrs. Nargy? I second it. Moved and seconded to hear Ordinance 2015-33. Mr. Chosnick? Uh, this is an ordinance that uh, is uh, proposed because West Lafayette uh, became a second-class city, and as a result of that, uh, they're entitled to two additional members to the Area Plan Commission. Under the Unified Zoning Ordinance, we have six municipalities, I don't know if you call Clarksville a municipality, but anyhow, uh, six uh, governmental units that are members of the Unified Zoning Ordinance, each one has to pass a similar ordinance approving uh, this change to uh, increase the Area Plan Commission uh, from 15 members to 17 members, and this gives West Lafayette the two members that equalizes uh, and recognizes them being a second-class city. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Comments or questions from Council? Comments or questions from members of the audience regarding Ordinance 2015-33? Seeing none, would the clerk please conduct a roll call vote? Heidi? Aye. Clinker? Aye. Nargy? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Brown? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Dent? Aye. Ordinance passes 8 to 0. Thank you. Next ordinance for first reading this evening is Ordinance 2015-34. An ordinance to amend the zoning ordinance to New County, Indiana, to rezone certain real estate from GB to NBU, 1802 Schuyler Avenue, James Pop Petitioner. Mr. Brown. Madam President, I move that we hear and approve Ordinance 2015-34. Thank you, Mrs. Williamson. Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded to hear Ordinance 2015-34. Mr. Teeter. Thank you, um, Madam President, ladies and gentlemen of the Council. Uh, Dan Teeter, attorneys Riley Teeter and Schreier, represent the petitioner. Uh, Mike, uh, Jim Pop is present this evening as the petitioner, as well as Mike Moss. He's the construction engineer for the project. They'd both be happy to answer or respond to any questions that you might have. As you're aware, we're requesting rezoning to MBU for this site. We received a favorable recommendation from Area Plan Commission staff, as well as the unanimous approval from the Area Plan. Uh, for this matter as well. Uh, the property is located on the north side of uh, Schuyler Avenue. It's surrounded by commercial activity and commercial uses in this area. It was the former location of the Overtime Tavern. As you may be aware, this summer a truck ran into the Overtime Tavern and uh, pretty much destroyed it. Mr. Pop has uh, raised that site. It's now a vacant site, and he wants to build Pop's Tavern on that location. Um, we're requesting MBU for a number of reasons. Uh, the negative uses that are allowed in GB are not there for MBU. Uh, for example, adult entertainment, live entertainment, so those go away. Many of the other uh, uses that are not compatible with that area as well. Additionally, if this stayed GB, we would not be able to utilize the site. We would not meet any of the uh, requirements of the Unified Zoning Ordinance. It would be unbuildable. So another reason to do NBU. We meet all the standards of the ordinance under NBU except for parking. Uh, we will ask for a parking variance for that. Uh, we think that's a safety issue. We think it's better for uh, those people to park on the street versus being able to have maybe one or two spaces on the site and then ask for a curb cut to go on to Schuyler. Uh, we talked to the engineer's office. They concur with that as well. Uh, we also spoke with the mayor. We've spoken with the engineer both for the variance and for the rezoning request, and it's my opinion that they have no objections to our request. So as a result, we would ask for your approval. Be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Teeter. Comments or questions from council? Would you cover that again, please? Uh, adult entertainment <coughs> is not allowed in NBU where it would be allowed in GB. So I was just trying to, there's many more, I, I was trying to give you a couple of things that wouldn't be allowed in one versus another, 
good reason to have NDU at that location. Mm -hmm. that Further comments or questions from Council? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Teeter. Thank you. Comments or questions from members of the audience regarding Ordinance 2015-34? Seeing none, with the clerk please conduct a roll call. Ordinance 2015-34. Heidi? Aye. Clinker? Aye. Nargi? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Brown? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downing? Aye. Ordinance passes 8-0. to zero. Thank you. The last ordinance for first reading this evening is Ordinance 2015-35. An ordinance to amend the zoning ordinance to Pickney County, Indiana to rezone certain real estate from R1U to NBU, 1103 North 6th Street, Space Community Development Corporation petitioner. Mr. Downing. I move to hear and approve ordinance 2015-35. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded to hear ordinance 2015-35. The petitioner here this evening, Mr. Bumbleberg. <laughs> Thank you. For the record, I'm Joe Bumbleberg with Lyle Eggleston. I have a representative from Faith Community Development Corporation here with me this evening, should questions arise. This is a request to rezone R1U to NBU. And, and I speak of this, the one lot that's being rezoned, I, I, I think we ought to think about it a little bit broader than that because we're really going to have a, a project here that has two lots in it. Uh, and the second lot uh, is uh, across the street, but it's integral in the thinking process for what we're doing here. The petitioner here is Faith Community Development Corporation, and if this rezoning is granted on this one lot, which is bare right now, they will want to build a community center. And in that community center, they would have meeting rooms and all of the kinds of community center activities that, that a small unit on this one uh, would have, and this is for that neighborhood, the Lincoln neighborhood, uh, which right now has none of this kind of facility in this very general area. <clears throat> the lot on the other corner, by the way, is the old cooler keg, and that building will come down. It's in sad state, I understand. We're going to take that down, and a pocket park will be built on that particular uh, lot. So we have here uh, this community center so that we can have meeting rooms, the game rooms, uh, rooms for counseling and those kinds of things that would be good for the neighborhood uh, and in general a neighborhood kind of facility. You have in the materials that I've presented to you a site plan with drawings. You have the staff report from the Area Plan Commission. Uh, this building will, if we can work it so that as to what we think, it'll kind of look like a home. It'll have a porch on it and, and be in that kind of uh, character. Uh, the project uh, will enhance the area. Uh, I think with any doubt, the Area Plan Commission staff said that, uh, and I agree with them, that this corner uh, needs developed to achieve the goals of the neighborhood plan uh, and to revitalize the neighborhood. Uh, no one spoke against uh, this at the uh, Area Plan Commission meeting and the matter had the staff recommendation of approval and the vote was unanimous in favor of this particular project. Thank you. We would request you approve this rezoning. Thank you, Mr. Bumbleberg. I think Faith Baptist should be commended for this type of project that they're doing. I'm sure Laurie will take that word back to <laughs> Pastor Byers, who asked me to, to, to make sure you understood that he's working tonight in counseling out at the, out at the uh, 26th place. But he'll, he'll appreciate that, Mr. Campbell. Yep. Further comments or questions from Council? Just one. The only thing that would make this better is if I could get a tenderloin at this place. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe though we have discussed that, uh, <laughs> but other those of us who uh, who remember the tenderloins of the cooler keg yes. will think that maybe a, a historical <laughs> part of the neighborhood is going to disappear. Oh yes. Yeah. Any other comments or questions from council? Thank you, Mr. Bumblebird. Comments or questions from members of the public regarding Ordinance 2015-35. Seeing none, would the clerk please conduct a roll call vote? Heidi? Aye. Clinker? Aye. Nargi? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Brown? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downing? Aye. Ordinance passes 8 to 0. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on to resolutions this evening. The first resolution to hear is Resolution 2015-20. A resolution for the 2016 Common Council calendar of meetings. Mrs. Nargi. I, I move that we hear and approve Resolution 2015-20. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. That's okay. Thank you. Moved and seconded to hear and approve Ordinance 2015-20. This is the Common Council calendar of meetings for the 2016 year. I think it's been through everybody it needs to go through to make sure there aren't any conflicts anywhere. But are there any comments or questions from Council regarding this calendar? Okay, comments or questions from members of the public regarding Resolution 2015-20? Seeing none, would the clerk please conduct a roll call vote on this resolution? Heidi? Aye. Slinker? Aye. Nargi? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Brown? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downing? Aye. Resolution passes 8 to 0. Thank you. And for the members of the audience, this res the uh, calendar is available on the city's website. Just take note that some of the calendar or some of the meetings of the regular caucus aren't always on a Monday pending the holidays. So be sure you check that out. The next resolution is Resolution 2015-21. A resolution approving a waiver of noncompliance and deduction for tax abatement in an economic revitalization area, Nantron American Advanced Aluminum Technologies, LLC. Mr. Campbell. I move for passage of Resolution 2015-21 on first and final reading. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Second. Moved and seconded for passage of Resolution 2015-21. Mr. Mayor. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen of the Council, this is the final resolution on what's been a long process through the Redevelopment Commission and over here to the City Council. Many steps in this process, as you know, uh, Nanshan is an important part of our industrial base uh, here in our community, and all of you uh, remember when we first were able to uh, win that economic development uh, project to bring that plant to this community. Uh, during the course of time, as we uh, allowed them to apply for tax bait abatements and those other incentive proposals, uh, it's come to our attention recently that some of the equipment uh, that they originally agreed to put into the facility and did put into the facility, in fact, even more than they had originally uh, anticipated, got left off their tax abatement uh, compliance. They had some different management at the time who did not include that in that original tax abatement uh, form which this members of this council had approved and approved the dollar amounts that we had talked about. So we have went through the process of allowing them to amend that uh, form and to have a tax abatement on that equipment that did not get listed on that original abatement and that's going forward um, that's not retroactive. And so uh, we'd appreciate your support on this. You know we all work to create a strong business environment. This is something they were originally promised and unfortunately um, some management they had failed to put it on the forms uh, correctly at the time, but this was all part of the original uh, negotiations for the plan. And in fact, uh, we talked originally about 140 to 161 million, and as you heard before, they're, they're well over 200 million dollars in their investment now. So they by, by far and away exceeded what they told us uh, they would do. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. There is a representative from Nanshan here. If there's something I can't answer, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Comments or questions from Council? Thank you very much. Comments or questions from members of the public regarding Resolution 2015-21? Okay, seeing none, would the clerk please conduct a roll call vote? Heidi? Aye. Blinker? Aye. Nargi? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Brown? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downing? Aye. Resolution passes 8 to 0. Thank you. Uh, reports of standing committees this evening. Reports of special committees. Reports by the mayor. Miscellaneous and new business. Reports of councilmen. Okay. We have a special presentation to kick off our public comment session this evening. We would like to welcome at this time the McCutcheon High School Robotics team. Hi. Is it Adia? Adi. Okay. Hi, my name is Adi. Um, I'm the lead mentor at a McCutcheon, uh, McCutcheon High School's robotics team. I'm a Purdue student, and I've been with the team now for three years. This will be my fourth year. Um, and they just do a lot of great stuff. That I mean, we keep it. We keep trying to interact more with the community, but we love to just talk more about it. Um, so McCutcheon's team started in the fall of 2011, just as an after-school club, and 
Five years later, we've grown. We're now considered an academic team. We actually have a Project Lead the Way course in the school, so students earn college credit for being part of robotics. And we've almost tripled the number of students we started out with and the number of mentors. And the basic idea of the robotics team, they use the project of building a robot and other technical things to teach students science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And beyond that, we try to teach leadership and business skills and just inspire students to go into STEM. It's just a career they don't sometimes consider, and we really try to do that. Um, we participate in the high school level of something called FIRST Robotics. And basically, the first Saturday in January, we are presented with a game we have to play. Thousands of teens around the world are, and from the moment we get that game, we have only six weeks to design, build, program, test, practice a little. Uh, and this isn't a small robot. It's three to four feet tall, 120 pounds, and it's controlled wirelessly. Um, and each year, the game is completely different. And these are high school students building professional level robots. Um, and I mean, I think it's really exciting seeing them learn. Um, so we use our class in the fall. We train them. So right now, all the students are getting ready for competition. We're teaching them um, the entire design process. And in the spring, they'll participate by uh, building the robot and then in competition. Um, our 2015 season ended in April. Our robot was called Atlas. The game involved stacking totes. So Atlas was the Greek god who held the, had the world on their shoulders. So we decided to go with that. Um, and we participated in two district competitions, the Indianapolis district competition, where we were court of finalists. And for the first time ever, our team won the safety award. At the Purdue competition, our team won the safety award again. Uh, we had a really good safety team. And we won something <laughs> called the Chairman's Award. Which is this thing. It's called a blue banner. The Chairman's Award is the number one award you can win at a competition. It's higher than winning the competition. It's basically the, uh, it's basically first telling you, you've created a program. This is what programs should be. And um, to give you kind of view on how it is, the other two teams in Indiana that won this at the district level, both of them have been around for 15 to 20 years and have long programs that have done a great job. We've been around for four years, and we were able to get that. And we were really excited to, really excited. I mean, I still wear this sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but our team is more than robots. That's something that we really want to talk about. It's also about changing our community. Every year, we have about 100 hours of community outreach where we participate in community events. You might have seen us at Mosey Down Main Street, Wabash River Fest. We participated in the Clean Sweep. Um, and then we hold our own events to just talk to people of all ages, kids through adults, about what robotics is and how they can get involved. We hold our own summer camp. We hold scrimmages for uh, middle school robotics teams. And then our biggest project. It's called Bot for Every Tot. Um, I let the kids name it. <laughs> uh, basically, the idea is we want every single student in Lafayette to have access to robotics, whether it be through a team in their school, in their 4-H club, boys and girls club, whether it be through a week or two program in their curriculum. That's what we want. When we started this program, uh, I mean, we started at zero dollars. We were investing in it. Every high school in Tippecanoe County luckily has a team. But for Tippecanoe School Corporation, only 30% of middle schools had a team and 0% of elementary school. Five years later, we've now spent $10,000 on this project. That's just our students raising the money on their own through grants, fundraising. And every single middle school in Tippecanoe School Corporation has a team. So that's 16 or 17 teams, 27% of elementary schools, and we even have two homeschool teams. We really want everybody to have access to this. Um, and it goes into something we call homegrown engineers. Uh, this is how we're helping the community. We have, such, we have companies in this area that need engineers, whether it be people who have engineering degree or people who have technology and science skills. And a lot of times they have to bring talent in, whether it be you know, recruiting at Purdue or re relocating someone from far away. And the statistics all say that when someone relocates to a different town, they usually leave within three to five years. That's what homegrown engineers is all about. We teach them here. We inspire them to go and pursue this as a career. And when they come back to work here in Lafayette, this is their home. They already have roots. And we've seen it working. We have several students right now. I mean, we're a young team that do work. We have someone at Subaru, one somebody at Caterpillar, and a student who just graduated who came home because he wants to work in Lafayette. Um, that's our vision. We want kindergarten through 12th grade, us have the programs and then send them off into the world and hopefully they come back. Um, that's basically what I wanted to talk to you about. If you have any questions, I'd be willing to answer them. Yeah. Well, all of the schools have the same aim as the home. What do you mean? That 
people in this area? Um, no, it really depends on how the team, the, the middle school teams are more focused on teaching the basic skills and making them wrap their minds around what is engineering, what is programming. When you get to the high school level, it's more about that. And each of the four high school teams is different. Um, they have their own goals. But they've all been around for many years, and they all do bring people back into the community. How about picking that up and showing the people out there that... <laughs> Much for having us. Thank you very much for sharing your information. It's inspiring on many levels. Um, I've had the privilege of seeing your robotics team in action at the library um, with a very crowded, excited young audience. So you're to be commended on inspiring the love of learning on so many levels. So thank you very much for sharing that. We'll open the floor to public comment from members of the audience at this time. Your remarks are requested to remain uh, three minutes or less. Please state your name and address when you approach the microphone. The floor is open for public comment. Mr. Campbell. Madam President, I'm away adjourned. Mr. Brown. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yep. Opposed. We are adjourned.